Hi everyone, Alex Tardy here, National Weather Service. Let's talk about the extended heat wave. Uh, here we are in October. Here's a summary. We're talking about temperatures across inland areas 10 to 20 degrees above normal. 10 to 20 degrees above normal values for this time of year. Dry, low daytime humidity. So that's elevated fire weather potential along with that heat. Now, at the same time, coastal fog. So that's a marine inversion. So moist conditions along the immediate coast and beaches, but much drier and warmer above that inversion. What's the inversion from? Persistent upper level high pressure. That's the heat dome. That's what brings these heat waves. Uh, lack of a jet stream. So the jet stream is far north. We'll see some fluctuations in this, especially Thursday and Friday, a little deeper marine layer cooler along the coast. Overall, the heat returns again for the weekend. Recently, this is how it's looked. We've seen a deep marine layer keeping temperatures cool and below average along the coast, while our deserts have been slowly heating and expanding to levels above average, as seen in the red shaded. This is what we're currently looking at. It's important to note the difference. Warnings are in the purple shaded. That's the highest level of heat, so most severe heat. Advisories are still important, still warmer than usual, Advisories are in the orange shaded on this map. Now, the warnings affect a large population, over 21 million in the Southwest and California. Advisories affecting about 12 million in population as shown here. Now, for our area of Southern California, inland valleys, including inland orange in the advisory level, now, the inland valleys, Inland Empire, San Diego, and the deserts, that's the purple shade. That is a warning. That's the highest level, uh, so most severe in the purple shaded. The most impacts are expected in the purple shaded areas. Now, we are dealing with fog and a marine inversion. What does that look like? So, the fog is caused by the warm air, the heat dome pressing down over the cooler ocean that forms the fog and low clouds. Now sticking above that is some of our terrain. So if you're hiking a mountain, it can be much drier and warmer once you break out above the marine inversion. This is the weather pattern that causes that marine inversion and why it's so hot over our mountains and deserts and inland valleys. Upper level high pressure, broad area across the Pacific and the Southwest. So not just the desert Southwest, the entire California area and the Eastern Pacific. This weakens as we get into Thursday. And so that's why we expect the marine layer to be a little more of a factor on Thursday and Friday. So a little cooler on the coast. Now, when we get to the weekend, it rebuilds. This time, though, it rebuilds from the desert, from the Southwest. And result is still very hot conditions over our mountains and deserts and inland valleys this weekend. We take a look at heat risk, and that's how we determine how significant the heat is, how unusual it is. So red is in the warning level for Tuesday, Wednesday. We see some of that red erodes across our inland empire and inland San Diego valleys by Thursday because of that marine layer. But we see it persistent in the mountains and deserts. Now into the weekend, Friday through Sunday, it starts to build back, build west, because that marine layer gets squashed, upper level heat dome gets stronger, squashing that marine layer inversion. So more red is evident across the inland valleys on the weekend. So keep that in mind, return to extreme temperatures in the red. Uh, we can look at some individual locations. Pick your favorite location or where you live. See what your prediction is, what your average or normal value is, what your records are, and what the departure from that normal average value. Some locations like Ramona, almost 20 degrees warmer than their normal average for October. Here's the actual temperatures that are predicted. So I'm going to step through. Here's Wednesday. Uh, really hot conditions across our inland valleys. A little bit of cooling slightly on Thursday because of that marine layer. That lasts into Friday. So Friday is pretty much a carbon copy of Thursday. Now, when we get over the weekend, uh, the inland valleys heat back up. A lot more 100s for Saturday. So keep that in mind for planning. 
Now, what about nighttime relief? Uh, not much uh, across the deserts, lows in the 80s, but some coolish conditions in our mountains and deserts due to the dry air. So we're allowed to cool off quite a bit. And then along the coast due to the marine fog and cooler air. Now, low humidity. This is a problem now through this weekend. Low humidity is a stress on the fire weather conditions. So not only are we excessively hot in the interior valleys and mountains and foothills, but humidities each day are dipping down to around 10%. It's very dry. That results in our fuel, our vegetation drying out. Uh, we don't want to be the red level, but, but you can see the prediction is that the fuel moisture of the vegetation, the increase in fire weather conditions occurs with this heat wave, just like it did in early September. The outlook, uh, well, doesn't look so good. The second week of October still looks above average warm conditions. We start to see the heat dome or the heat wave shifting a little further north and east, however, as we get into mid-October. Now the fall outlook, uh, we are expecting La Nina across the Equatorial Pacific Ocean, which is the cooler ocean temperatures along the equator, not the rest of the Pacific. Uh, so we are expecting a slow start, uh, dry conditions and warmer than normal for this upcoming fall. This is showing October through December. Here are some resources and you can always check us out uh, in addition to YouTube on Facebook and on X. Some of these links you might find useful for tracking the hot temperatures or for predicting the heat risk. Stay cool everyone and please drink plenty of water. Avoid the peak heating of the day, especially if you're in a warning area.